What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, I am super stoked to go ahead and take a look at my very first RTX 3070. This is the Zotac Twin Edge White Edition, which everybody has been doing videos on recently uh, with a lot of people doing white rig builds a little outside of my traditional price range, but I'm really excited to finally touch a 3070. The highest I've gone is a 3060 Ti. Anything higher than that has just really been outside of my comfort level and price range. As you guys know, I'm traditionally hang around that kind of pre-owned used market. So this GPU is not mine. A friend of mine sent it to me. He actually sent me a number of cards and I'm going to, be doing, going to be doing a rig in the next few weeks for them and building it outright. But I thought, hey, I got this sitting around waiting. Let's go ahead and do a video on it. So the 3070. So these cards are great. Zotac does a lot of drops on these cards. We see them a lot on Zotac's um, queue that they do have out there. If you guys aren't familiar, Zotac has a queue that randomly pops up. So all of a sudden their store turns into a giant line and they don't make any announcements. You don't know when it's gonna be. It just suddenly happens and it's kind of like word of mouth. So you go, you jump on there and you wait your turn in line and hopefully you get into their store. Once in their store, you have five minutes to browse, purchase and check out or else you're done, you're kicked out. So that's where you see a lot of these Zotac gaming cards uh, come available on the market. So this one here uh, is an LHR card and the way we are telling that is take a look right here on the back, it has a sticker and believe it or not, like you could tell this is a sticker. It's not even built on the box because I can put my fingernail under it right here. This is purely a sticker that they stick on the boxes here. And kudos to them for labeling it and letting us know. They do not have to put LHR stickers on cards. They are not forced to do such a thing, but I'm glad that they do it to allow us to identify it. Granted, any GPU at this point that is coming out, you should assume is LHR. Like that's just where we are in the game right now. So let me go ahead and get this unboxed and let's take a look at our 3070 that we're gonna be going ahead and testing today. Okay, so let's get this unboxed. So this literally hasn't even had the sticker cut on it yet. So I'm excited to uh, do this. Ooh. No going back now, guys, no going back now. Look at that, it even has the LHR sticker right here on the side as well. I actually missed that the first time through. So let's open her up, see what we're dealing with here. Try to keep the box intact. You don't want to rip the box. <laughs> Do you guys get excited over the boxes too? Like you don't want to harm them at all. Keep them in good shape. All right, so we got some material, nothing crazy. Some padding. Would you like a splitter? We got a splitter in here, two splitters in here. And finally, under all this packaging, we have, look how little it is. <laughs> That's awesome. So I think it's uh, Chump Change. Uh, XD actually has a boatload of these and has had a lot of trouble uh, with the fans and having to replace these. So that's definitely something to look out for. Uh, it does have a eight pin, uh, or two eight pins actually, so quite a bit on here. Uh, we have a nice looking shroud on the back side as well. And uh, then you can go ahead and see our heat pipes and everything like that on this side. So not too bad. Uh, you know, everything looks pretty, pretty good. Let's get the plastic off here. So crazy when you find people that leave the plastic on the side of the cards, like they don't even take it off. Either one, they don't realize it, or two, they're like, oh, I'll keep it on there for resale. And then years later, it's impossible to get off and it looks disgusting and everything like that. Um, I think it was uh, Chump Change actually that the center stickers, there's like stickers here, they turn yellow uh, is my understanding. Uh, but this looks fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this put in our test bench. If you guys didn't check out our video that we put out the other day, uh, we built a brand new test bench. It's a Thermaltake Core P3. And uh, its sole purpose is purely for doing this type of testing with brand new cards. So let's get that installed and we'll check back in a minute and see how this card does on Ethereum. 
So before we get too far into things, we do need to go ahead and set a baseline for our watts. So our current test bench right now, uh, we do have a voltage meter hooked up to it. And you guys can see currently in the green there to the left hand side that we are averaging right around 25 watts. Now this has HiveOS booted without a GPU. So our, our baseline is 25 watts. So when we go ahead and have this card up and running, we will subtract 25 watts from the total watts used. As I recommend on my channel time and time again and to my Discord community, please get yourself um, a voltage meter. It doesn't need to be something that's fancy. It could just be something that plugs into the wall, but you cannot truly determine your profitability without a voltage meter at the wall. I would not recommend trying to use HiveOS or any other software tools. They are just entirely inaccurate. Okay, let's get this installed and let's talk about some Ethereum. Okay, so we are now plugged in and ready to go. Uh, we do have a flight sheet applied and we are mining Ethereum. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a few things. So right now we are uh, mining Ethereum, taking some notes here. We're, we're stock overclock settings and our watts uh, total is currently, if I look over, we're at 225 on our voltage, me on our voltage meter. So we have to make sure we minus 25 because that's what our rig uses. So right now we're at 200 watts and that's giving us 38.89 mega hash. So that gives us some notes there to get started. Now you can see even in the miner right now, it's saying we're using 179 watts. Um, so this is some really good information for you guys to know. So like, I'm tr it's pretty close, but not quite there. So if we look at the card right now in HiveOS, it says 190 watts. So it's off by about 10 watts there. Uh, let me refresh the miner or uh, refresh HiveOS. Okay, 179, so a little bit better there. Um, but you can see there's some discrepancy. You know, our discrepancy is a, is a solid amount of watts, which it's, it's cents. We're talking pennies here. But at the end of the day, when you're looking at the grand scheme of things, those, those pennies add up. So let's go ahead and get some overclock setting in for Ethereum. Keeping in mind, this is an LHR card. So this is not going to do 60 mega hash plus. This is an LHR card, so we're more likely to get somewhere around that 40 to, to 45 mark. Okay, so let's get some overclock settings in now for Ethereum. So where we're going to start out here is uh, we're going to go ahead and use the overclock settings of negative 200. We're going to use 2600. We're going to use a fan of 100 and then our power limit of 120. So let's go ahead and get that applied here. And let's take some notes while we wait for that. So uh, mining ETH. Mining ETH. Uh, overclock, let's see, core was negative 200, our memory was 2600, and our power limit was 120. So our watts total is the next thing we want to take a look at, you know, where does this put us at? Because every time we use more and more watts, it's, it's costing us more money. That's, that's an expense, and that's profit out of our pocket overall. So taking a look right now at our voltage meter, we can go ahead and see we're right about 150. We're bounced all over the place, and, and that's due to that LHR. That's the that's the minor fighting that the uh, that LHR of the card. We're gonna round that to about 150. What? I'm gonna say 150 uh, at this point. So now we're gonna go ahead and minus our 25 here, and that's gonna go ahead and that will put us at 125 uh, watts total. And our hash rate, let's go ahead and give a refresh here. It looks like we're at 44.8 uh, is where I'm seeing. We're at 40 right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and record this here. 44.88 mega hash, uh, which looks really, really good. So now what I want to do is I want to use absolute core clock. I want to see if we can lock in the core to see what this does for us. Oh, look at that. We actually got 45.71. Uh, so we didn't even give it enough time there, uh, which is great. So let's come in here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, change things up here a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and put some new settings in. Okay, so for the next set we're going to use here. Now, this is going to be for locking in the core. So we're going to go ahead and do 1100. We're going to do 2400. And we're going to do 125. Let's go ahead and apply that. And let's see how we do. So the big things that we're looking for here is our watts versus our hash rate. Can we get lower 
can we dip this lower? Can we get below that 125 mark total for our GPU? You know, the less watts we're using, the more money we're saving. But you also have to look at efficiencies and like, where does this put us? We're going to drop this down. Is that going to lower our watts? But we're going to also lose a lot of hash rate with it. So we do need to keep an eye on our hash rate. So let's go ahead here. Mining Ethereum. Our core is 1100. Our memory is 2400. And our power limit is 125. So for our watts total, let's take a look here. We are at one. Just watching our watching our voltage meter right now. Say 140. It's bouncing. Ooh, going up there. Man, it's all over the place. We're gonna say 140, 142 is what we're gonna do there. So we're gonna minus 25 here. So 142 minus 25. That's going to give us 117. So we definitely have cut our watts down, which is great. Um, but our question is, what is our hash rate at? So taking a look here, we're at 4519. I did see a 4614. So that is going to bounce all over the place just because of that LHR. 4586, that, that's definitely good in the middle there. So without a doubt uh our locking in our core clock definitely uh, is the way to go with our watts versus our hash rate so if we go over to what to mine now and you know if we take a look here now you want to select the 3070 l not 3070 by itself because this is an lhr card so if you select that you can see it's telling us we should be right around 44 so we are there we're at that 45.86 uh, and then for our watts which this is a big win here we're at 117. So let's hit calculate. Our cost for electricity is put in at 0 0.058. And we can come down here. Oh my gosh, look at this all over the place here. Uh, but look at that flux actually, uh, based off of those. Flux is popping off right now, 238. That's crazy. You can see here it's at 110% right now. So it's 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 insanity. Um, right now we're at a profitability of uh, 24 hours and it's averaging over the last 24 hours. So uh, Ethereum right now, 238. So that if we take a look, we can see it's $2.49 uh, for our revenue and our cost is 16 cents. So per day we're making $2.32. Per month we're making 69.68. So if we take our profit per day, and we times that by 365, we are at $846. Oh, that is rough. That is rough. That's what that, that, that this is. This is yearly profitability, guys. So off of this one card, we're making 840. I mean, I should say it's rough. This is not terrible, uh, but that's literally making us $846.80 per year off of this one card. Now, if we go over to uh, eBay here, Let's see what these cards are go for. So this is the Zotac uh, 3070 Twin Edge OC. So, and now we wanna make sure when you come over here, we're just using eBay as a um, benchmark. This one sold for 1349, 910, 9999, 14. Wow, these are all over the place. Let's put white in here just to see, because I feel like there's more demand for white cards. 1,099, 1,090, 1,049, 1,000. Wow, 1,060, 1,085. Wow, okay. So let's do 1,049. Let's do 1,049 as our number there. So if we use that as our number here for our hardware cost, hit calculate, it's going to take us over a year to break even because we are looking at our cost here. Now, we have to keep in mind this, you know, our 1049 is what it is on eBay. It's not what we bought it for from the Zotac store. What does that give us here? If we go to the Zotac store, can we see? Oh, we can. Perfect. Perfect. So let's look at a 3070. Does it show us the white ones? Oh, it doesn't. Okay, 3070 Ti, 3070 Amp Hollow. They don't even list them? Let's see, view more. Let's see. I was hoping that they would show us 
those that here but uh if we look at just the 3070 let's say 3070 amp hollow that's at 899 so i'm just trying i don't know what these cards go for retail as i said i didn't buy it this is not my card uh but that gives us an idea now granted if we put an 899 so let's say you waited patiently uh and you got it off the store 899 385 so you're getting closer getting closer to one year i like to and the reason this is such a challenge guys because it's an lhr 3070 if this wasn't an lhr 3070 it would be totally different uh but that being said because it's lhr it's increased our time i try to keep my break even below a year like if it's below a year it's a win-win at this point in time so i'm going to zip through our our other configurations our ravencoin our ergo and our uh flux at this point um so let me go ahead and get those numbers together and then we'll go over them okay we have wrapped up our testing for tonight oh my gosh i'm so surprised by the results and man did i have some struggles so let's go ahead and go through it so ethereum we went over together we determined our profitability per day was two dollars and 33 cents moving on from there ravencoin oh my gosh ravencoin so ravencoin two dollars and 47 cents right now and man, I went to town trying all different types of overclock settings on all of these. And I, I can't believe it, but a zero core 3200 memory and a 200 power limit put us at a GPU watts about 215. And man, we did about 32.18, which was pretty dang good. I mean, you can see there, as I said, $2.47. Jumping on from there, Ergo. So Ergo was definitely a challenge. I didn't see the results I expected, and I looked at a few different 3070s out there and kind of what people were reporting. And, and this model here, I, I don't know, I tried a few different miners. I just could not get above 101.1 on the hash rate. I, I just had no luck with it. Um, so that really dampened my daily profitability. I did see some people out there that were getting like 160, which is like so much higher. So like, I'm not sure how they achieved that. I tried a lot of different overclock settings of miners. As I said, we were only seeing about a dollar and 54 cents per day on Ergo. Finally, finally, the unicorn in the group flux flux blew my mind here, guys entirely blew my mind flux. 175 core, 2700 memory with a power limit of 200 resulted in 210 watts. This gave us 70.4 for souls because that's what it's measured in flux with a daily profitability of $2.94. That's a pretty big swing. I mean, ETH has usually been king here, but now this is being recorded on the 29th at about 9, 10 p.m. at night. So you know these things change drastically. But man, Ravencoin and Flux coming out to represent here tonight with the profitability numbers. Uh, it was crazy. Entirely crazy. Well, guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for our RTX 3070 LHR video. Hopefully you guys uh, gained some knowledge from this video. Hopefully some of these overclock settings helped you out. Hopefully if you have a 3070 LHR, you're looking at this and going, hmm, I need to pivot off of Ethereum because Ravencoin and Flux are definitely much more profitable. But it really depends on your mining strategy and where you want to go from here. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care.